Hello everybody, this is a bowl which I just have just turned. In fact I was in the middle of doing a demonstration on how to turn the bowl when my batteries went flat so kaput. <laughs> have to do that another time. But so while we're here, I was going to using the cheese cutter, the one I got from the second hand store, but I'll show you to how to facet this bowl. Um, when faceting, I bring the, the pot to the edge of the the edge of the banding wheel like that. Okay. Now I'll try and do this in such a way that you can see. Now you have to hold the pot a little bit down onto the and with one. continuous cutting movement in other words as soon as you the wire digs in just take it on down don't stop or hesitate all the way down in one in one cut now what you have to do is take the pot turn it so that the the facet up here that I just cut is directly opposite me okay that's there okay and we'll do another cut here down and I turn it 90 degrees and I do the third cut there I turn it once more for the fourth cut it's going to go there and right there Now that fourth cut is just a little short than what I wanted it to be. I didn't follow, didn't follow the contour completely of the of the pot properly there. So what happened was the the wire came out too soon. Yeah. So another one. Okay. You just keep on going around here now, filling in these ones which that that and the last one like that. Okay, so there we I've now cut the pot so right so next thing I might just you see where these facets have not quite met up here I mean you can do them like this, this one in this on this Sullivan bowl, you see they've they've met up perfectly. All right. Well, they don't always meet up. So you you have to you can then do something else, another little decoration you can put in there. You know, you know use your imagination there. Do whatever you what it, what you, whatever you feel is is appropriate. Now this one here, you notice this facet is just a little bit shorter than that. And I may just try to to rectify that, but I don't. It's not all that easy to go in a second time with the with the cutter. The cutter's really a a once a once off affair. Um, where my knife is it's actually quite. When this happens, I I usually say a few words. <laughs> it's not that easy to it's not that easy to rectify that. Now, as you can see, I'm using the the scraper here. Oh, well, that's not actually 
that's not actually too bad. That's not actually too bad. That's uh, see, that was the one there. Now that one is actually yeah. Uh, they haven't got to be exactly the all exactly exactly the same. Are we, you know, this is a handmade process we're dealing with here. So we're not machines. That's the beauty of handmade pottery, isn't it? Okay. Well, there you are. There we are. All right. Now you don't have to do faceting with one of these. You can. You can use a, a knife, not one probably like that, but one that's got more of a, a a wider blade and a stiffer blade. And you can you can just cut them, as it were, manually like that as opposed to using that. The good thing about this is that it only allows you to cut a maximum of, of a certain thickness. You see, that thickness there is really, the thickness of that corresponds to the distance between the roller and the wire and that is governed by that so you can only take off so much so you get a fairly even cut. So if you've got a bowl that's of a, a certain wall thickness you can cut fairly with with some confidence with one of these because you know it won't it'll only take so much it won't go right through because the fear is as you're cutting oh dear is it going to go right through and and make a hole on the on the inside anyway a few thoughts there on um, faceting give it a go see ya